every time he discovers a kid is missing, especially it's one of the kids we've come to know, it's mm. like it is kind of this like shocking, like, oh no, like they're gone. Like mm-hmm. you realize there is no saving that kid. And you see the pain on his face as he's like has to mark them as missing. Yeah. And it's like But like every time that happens, it's like it's a painful like moment for the audience and for him. Mm-hmm. So but like there yeah, there's definitely moments of, like world shattering loss and like especially the last train like that's probably the biggest one well that's what i was thinking of for sure yeah because you could see so. that haunts him like that yes. absolutely haunts him the fact that he keeps the paper in the back of his scrapbook of all the kids that were supposed to have gotten on that last train but didn't mm-hmm. is a testament to you as an audience to how much he feels devastated by that last train with you know 250 kids that didn't end up making it because the border was shut down right then and mm-hmm. that's you know it it eats at him um that being mm-hmm. said you are you are absolutely right that all every time a kid is lost is a is a big deal to him and mm-hmm. i think that's a testament too to making you care about a side character just enough that it is that it matters i'm not sure mm-hmm. if you could do this in other situations i think it's easier. this is definitely a situation uh for this particular story this is definitely something you could do for this kind of story. You can't do it for many other stories. Mm-hmm. Like, considering this is a story about refugees, like trying to rescue refugees from a bad situation, this mm-hmm. is one of the few times you could do something like this. This is not like a technique you could replicate in other stories very well and make it make right. sense. So, Right, exactly. I think because, you know, children are one of the most vulnerable groups you can think mm-hmm. of. and And there's a lot of... I think natural empathy that comes for children who are in a vulnerable spot and, and this desire to help them is a very understandable desire. There's a lot of people who go into noble causes, uh, you know, whether that's adoption or that's, you know, helping kids who are in the foster care system or, you know, any other number of jobs are doing refugee work like this. You know, there's a lot of people who go into work like that because they believe in helping the, the, disfortune or or the misfortuned people of the world Mm -hmm. and um i I think it's a lot easier to look at a situation like that and and to develop that connection with a child and and to care genuinely what happens to them so that when something bad happens it is heartbreaking um Mm -hmm. i I think it's a lot harder to do that for adults or for animals or for other situations i'm not saying it Mm -hmm. can't be done what i am saying is that this was a unique opportunity to develop those connections quickly and multiple characters and then to capitalize on that from a storytelling mm-hmm. perspective. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, yeah. even then, some of these kids do get screen time. They're like, you see Nicholas interact with mm-hmm. them. Like, he plays with them, he talks right. with them. And, like, we're given these, like, brief moments of interaction. It was like, oh, you like this? I like this, too. Like, and it's like... Right. Like, is this your yeah, yeah, sister? Yeah. Is like, is like, you just like, you get these little interactions. Like, they're so simple, but they build just a little bit of a connection. And it's like, as an audience, it just establishes it in our mind. So when we do, the kid is suddenly disappears or like they're taken by the Nazis. It's like, it is a loss. It is like a painful like moment for all of us. Right. No, I I I agree. I'm just thinking of normally if you're gonna. If you're going to take a character and then just kill him off, it, <laughs> it doesn't work in my mind. Like, I well, don't know. Think... Yeah, I, that's why I said it's for this particular movie, for this particular story. Right. Like, this situation only works for the story they were trying to tell here. You can't mm-hmm. take, like, an action epic, like, uh, I don't know, like, take it like a superhero movie or something and do the same thing. It would be really hard to do the same thing with that without it feeling right. forced. <laughs> right. Well, like the Avengers Age of Ultron, they have the character where Quicksilver dies this in the same movie. And it's semi-effective, but it's not really that effective, I don't think. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is because it's you have to really give someone time to develop who they are, why they're there, why should we, we sh- should even care that they're still alive at the end of the movie. And um, they don't mm-hmm. they don't do that well with that that character. Um, same thing mm-hmm. happens in, in GOT at the end with this girl who's... Uh, it's supposed to be an ally to to the Starks, and then she ends up dying. You know, like there's there's I've seen multiple examples where they try to have this dramatic slow mo death of oh no, oh no, they're dead, oh no, and I'm just like okay. I mean, I whether I saw it coming or not, 
I'm not trying to be heartless. It's just that you didn't develop the connection with them as a character that I, I genuinely care. Mm -hmm. So I think this was one of those times where not only did they do that well, but they did that well multiple, multiple times. And part of that is going back to what you said, scenario specific.